This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, my name is Christina Clark O'Karmas. I am the executive director at the Alabama Campaign for Adolescent Sexual Health. Um, as many of you may have attended one of our monthly webinars before, but this is our January 2022 webinar. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. We are excited to welcome um, Taylor Gallops of the Laura Brown Crandall um, Foundation. And Taylor is going to be talking to us today um, in light of Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, going to be talking to us today about cervical cancer in Alabama and also, um, and especially the HPV vaccine for young people. Um, that is a big concern for us at the Alabama campaign as it's directly related to um, sexual and reproductive health. So that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, we are recording so that if you wanna come back and watch this at a later time, it'll be posted on our website. You can also share it with your colleagues or anyone who wasn't able to make it today. Um, I'll also be sharing it via email. And um, two other things. One, I will be sending out just a really quick evaluation after this um, webinar. It's just like four questions asking you about your experience today, um, asking if there's any other topics you'd like to see us cover. So like I said, we do this once a month. And the other thing is just to say thank you to our sponsors for today's event, which is Department of Human Resources, Alabama Department of Human Resources. Um, they fund our work and they are um, funding this webinar today in particular. So I will um, hand the reins over to Taylor now and let him get us started. Um, again, thank you so much, Christina, for allowing me to come and speak. Um, I'm Taylor Gallops from I'm the program director for the Laura Crandall Brown Foundation. And our foundation is um, we help women um, with, GYN, um, with GYN cancers. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quickly. So um, can everybody see it? I can see it. The only thing I see is a little um, stop sharing button there at the bottom that might. Yep, perfect. Yep. OK, awesome. So um, why the HPV vaccine matters. Um, just to give you a little background about us, the Laura Kroner Brown Foundation is a nonprofit organization founded in 2009 in honor of Laura Kroner Brown, who passed away at age 25 with ovarian cancer. She constantly expressed to be able to help others and tell them and support them. So within this, her friends and family um, made um, this foundation in her memory. And so we are very excited. Um, today, um, as of today, the Laura Crandall Brown Foundation works to fulfill the three mission, um, threefold mission, offering hope through early detection research of ovarian cancer, empowering communities to um, through ge geological um, awareness, which is what we're doing right now. So thank you again for participating and enriching the lives um, through patient support. So again, January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, and we are excited to be here just to let you know um, that this uh, all about cervical cancer. So um, group question that I would like to just ask the group in one or two, if you could speak up is what do you know about human papilloma virus? Just to let folks know, you can answer in the chat or you can come off mute. Um, you should um, you be able can, to do that. Yeah, if you would like to come off mute and just, um, just I would like to know kind of what you know about um, human papilloma virus. Well, um, what is HPV? HPV is a, um, the human papilloma virus and it has more than a hundred types that can affect tissues in the genitals, also in the head, in the neck, in the throat. 85% of women will be affected with this in their lifetime. So how do you get HPV? So how you get it is anyone who's ever had a sexual encounter without, with or without penetration um, can, get, can get HPV through contact. The most common transmission is skin-to-skin -skin contact with the fetus, scrotum, vagina, vulval, and anus of, of an infected person. So just the biggest part here is realizing that you don't have to, it does not involve penetration always. Within this 80% of people will get HPV in their lifetime. You know, this is, you know, big scale thinking here of understanding that this is truly an epidemic that is, with, um, that is within us. 
So um, everybody who, you know, um, saw the football game last night, just think more than 29,000 cases of cancer can be prevented through an HP vaccine. So this is like the, the average size of a, fa of a baseball field. Just think of that. Imagine that in your mind. Literally that, that whole thing can just be filled with people and it can be preventable. That's just the, that's the power of the HP vaccine. Within it, I did want to give you just a little diagram to kind of show that HPV is not only in women, it is in men. Within men, it does affect them in the neck and um, in, the, in the oral, which it would be mouth or in the neck of that or penile and anal cancer. With most with women, it comes into cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, and vulval cancer. Again, eight out of 10 people will get this in their lifetime. So how does HPV cause cancer? There are 15 strains that have been associated defined with cancer in both men and women, with 46,000 HPV associated cancer diagnoses in the US each year. So again, you know, with all of these, these can be preventable. So I did want to give a little chart today just to show you exactly um, the, the different types and um, just the numbers of it. So just looking at, you know, through, um, we, we'll, we'll look at vagina today and see that it has over 600 um, cases of that within both sexes. 75% of that was caused by HPV within it. So cervical cancer is um, all triggered by the HPV infection. Typically younger women in American society estimates more than 1,500 um, 14, cases will be diagnosed within the US this year. Several cancers are the most common HPV associated cancer among women with 25.9% of cervical cancers occur in women who are between the ages of 35 and 44 with 14% of them being between 20 and 34 and 23.9 being between 45 and 54. So I did wanna show just some symptoms of, um, of cervical cancer with it being lower back pain, back pain during, um, um, pain during sex, bleeding, um, or after sex or between periods, postmenopausal bleeding, and unusual um, vaginal discharge. So just know if you have any of these symptoms, you know, go to your doctor and realize to know in your body is your biggest power, is understanding that you know and you can make and you can do this. So why vaccinate? Um, since the HPV vaccine was released, many studies have demonstrated a drop in the number of HPV infections. So we've seen that with getting the vaccine, it does work. You know, that it is showing truce within that. So already now, 71% of all infections have gone down among teen girls by getting it. So again, it is proving with HPV vaccines that it does work. So timing. So why timing matters? So recommend for children, but starting at age 9 to 12. So within that, we are trying to start early with them so that they can actually be done by the time they're 13, they can be completed through it. Understanding within a, within a timeline also, the goal is to start before exposure. So always vaccinate before the exposure. So just to kind of give a chart here of doses. So nine to 14 years old, they do have the two dose or the three doses. You know, and then it does right here within this chart, it does show the actual um, progression of time that it would take with that, with, with children. So why, um, why that HPV vaccine, why it matters. The rate of cervical cancer in women um, before, um, vac vaccinated before 18 is one and one tenth the rate of cervical cancer women who have not received the vaccination. So within, um, just within cervical cancer, again, this does, like within getting the vaccine, this will help honestly get, you know, get us on track with that. So just to show you just HPV in the USA, I wanted to say, you know, nationwide, six out of 10 um, of parents choosing to get um, the, the HPV vaccine for their children. So within that, there are some that are not, but some that are, are. and then within this education, just understanding that getting this vaccine does help your child. So even with it, let's think about, you know, 
if you're, you know, let's think about the long term of getting cervical cancer that would cause infertility that would, you know, there's many other factors that would come in with just having children. So it does not only affect the single person, it does affect generations down the line. So um, there, there are some vaccines just for children, um, you know, to help this if you know people who need it, then it's called um, Vaccines Children's Program. And so who is eligible for this? Any child that is on any type of government health, health insurance is automatically in, like, can, can get the vaccine for free. Um, a child who has no health insurance can get this for free. And also any American Indian or native Alaskan can get this. Um, there, are, there are providers. If you go to this link below, you can actually click on it and see where, um, you know, uh, where all these places are that's all throughout Alabama. There's multiple, multiple places. There's pages of different doctors that will be able to take um, a child in if they need it. Um, I do want to talk about, you know, just some of the support that we do for our GYN patients. And if you are, if you know, if you, if you are watching this today and you do need support, we do have our Can Survive group. Um, our Can Survive group is for women that we can have a safe place for women to talk to doctors, to make friends. You know, within that, we do have a Facebook group that you can look us up on. Um, you would just type in Can Survive and you would see it pop up and we would love to have you. Um, we do have a woman to woman program that does pair women that have been, just been diagnosed to women that are still that are going through the fight as well. So that we do have a, mentor, a mentorship program to allow um, women to meet other women and have that support of just having someone to talk to and things like that. So um, this, is, this right here is our car tag. Um, within our car tag, you know, we do have this and I would like to tell you, you know, just a bit of why it's so important. Um, we do work in direct patient support where we help women actually, um, you know, we help them with their, with their bills, their car payments. We help them just with any financial needs that they may have. But within this car tag, if you get it in Alabama, $41.25 out of the 50 will come to us directly um, just so we can continue to help women to keep their lights on and everything like that. So just understand that, you know, our car tag, we also, it's a great way to show awareness year round as well. Here are just some quotes that I really wanted to just to go through and show of just how the, how the Laura Kroner Brown has impacted others. I wanted to thank the Laura Kroner Brown for their generous gift, their generous gift cards and gas for medicine. Um, this is so much, this means so much to my family and has helped me during my treatment. I have two fewer things to worry about. You know, I think that's a very powerful statement. Um, it's a, also within this, it's a, it is so refreshing and breathtaking to have something lifting in your life. All, all of you at Laura Kroner Brown Foundation are angels to so many. And I just wanted to say thank you again. And you are appreciated. You know, we are constantly, you know, our goal is to, to constantly support and help women that are in this because we understand at the Laura Kroner Brown Foundation that cancer is not prejudice. And that, you know, we, we, our goal is to help everyone. You know, I did want to open the floor for some questions. So I have a couple questions, Taylor. I'll get us kicked off. And if anyone else has questions, you can um, put them in the chat or you can um, come off your mic or come onto your mic. I'm sorry, come off of mute. Um, so one thing I noticed was you had mentioned there was a two shot series and there was a three shot series for nine to 14 year olds. Can you tell us a little bit more about the difference between those two series? The two series of that is just the, the how early you start, you know, because okay. when you start, if you start at nine, that's when we can start with the two doses. But the farther you get into teen years is when you get into three doses. Okay. And with the goal being... Um, before first sexual exposure is when you would you would yes, want with to be that. complete with the series before first sexual exposure. Okay, um, and then I think you had also mentioned that um, something like eighty percent of women will be exposed to HPV in their lifetime. Is that right? It's um, actually within that it's at eighty five thousand women, but oh. eighty million people will be okay. um, so eight out of ten. So around that, but I mean, like I said, that's just in their lifetime. And even HPV can stand dormant and you don't even know that you have it to even pass it to your partner. 
right. you know, and things like that. And it can also be transferred to children through breast milk as well. Oh, okay. Well, I just, I do recall, um, this has been a long time ago, because I think I heard this back in college, but that everyone, you know, basically, it's so prevalent that it's almost like everyone is going to be exposed to it at some point. Um, but for a lot of us, our body's natural immune system will fight it off. And then, of course, for those of us um, who our natural immune system isn't able to, it can develop into um, warts or um, even the cancers that you talk, had mm -hmm. talked about. And the HPV vaccine also does prevent some of those um, some of those genital warts as well, right? A couple of those strains, is that right? Yes, they do result in genital warts within uh, within women. So it would be more of like the vulval or vaginal um, type cancers that would right. that would be resulted of this. But yes, HPV um, genital warts is a like they genital warts and HPV are kind of hand in hand, and they come to how they how they hurt how they affect people. Okay, so it's um, that's good that you just said that. Um, there is a question from Elizabeth. You mentioned that only 15 strains of HPV are the cancer-causing ones. Is there an association between the HPV strains that cause genital warts and the cancer-causing ones? So it sounds like there is an association. To my understanding, no. But oh, okay. um, to my understanding, there this these are totally different um, because there's are there are certain cancers that match up with the actual strains, um, because there's so many that only those few actually were, are in actual. So the, um, the vaccine cancer. covers the 15 most prevalent types of yes. HPV, yes. right? Okay. Yes. And there's only, um, there's only one type now. And so, um, and so that's the type that will, that will have all of them, okay. all of the 15. Right. One vaccine. Um, and that, is that still mm -hmm. Gardasil? Yes, it's still okay. Gardasil. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, so I feel, oh, I know, um, with young men, so the concern obviously isn't a GYN cancer, but it would be penile or anal or throat, neck. Yes, men, men are more likely now to get an HPV, an HPV related cancer because it is starting to be that throat and, um, and mouth cancer are the most common in men. And okay. it's becoming a, you know, a big problem with men within that. Right. Um, I think I told you when we were, had a call, um, prepping for this, for this webinar, but, um, back it's, I think in August, we had um, the state dental officer come on and talk about HPV vaccines because of the close association with oral pharyngeal um, cancers. And so a lot of dentist office um, were providing the HPV vaccine, which is like, doesn't quite, you know, make sense in our brain. He really had to explain it to me because I was like, why, why would a dentist office be offering the HPV vaccine, but it's because of those oral pharyngeal cancers that they're now seeing a rise in. Um, so Elizabeth also said that uh, the cutoff in the PowerPoint for vaccination is 26. Can someone older than 26 get the vaccine? To my knowledge, yes, but it's still a three round. Right. Yeah, that's what I've always known as well that um, Anyone can get a, the vaccine at any time. It's just not going to be as effective if you have it after your exposure because you may have already been exposed to the cancer causing um, mm -hmm. HPV at that point. But yes, I think you can get it probably your whole life. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to my understanding, you can. It's just within it, it's just like you said, exactly that it's, it's once you have that contact and, you know, then it's already in, it doesn't, it's kind of, you know, it doesn't really help. You know, it's kind of like right. getting the flu shot after you get the flu. Right, right. Um, okay, great. Um, so yeah, so for the campaign, we always recommend, I mean, obviously recommend folks to talk with their doctors always um, or their medical provider, but that young people should get the HPV vaccine because it prevents cancer. And um, we definitely want that for our young people. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of folks, I think that there's a myth, just kind of like with sex education, there's this myth that if we um, provide sex education, then, then young people will want to have sex. And, um, there's, and there's also this, 
myth that if you give them the vaccine, then they're going to engage in sexual risky sexual behaviors. Um, but there's nothing in the evidence that proves that. <laughs> no, zero correlation right. of it. You know, yeah. um, I think a lot of it too, when we talk about HPV is that it is a sex, we talk about sex. And I think, you know, a lot of parents even have the idea of thinking that their kids are having sex, you know, and that's something to even bring up is that sexual activity, it's going, it's going to happen at some point, right. you know, and then I think that that's a lot of, you know, just the thoughts behind it of parents, honestly, not even accepting that their kids are going to, you know, but if they are, you know, go ahead and if you go ahead and get them vaccinated, at least you know that they're safe you know, starting at a young age and with that, but just know that we have to start talking about sex more and make it okay in society. You know, we have to really start pushing that. Well, and I think that um, I imagine, especially I'm a, a parent of a very young child, um, but I can imagine that it would be difficult to think about, um, you know, a nine-year-old and needing to be protected from uh, cancer that only happens once they engage in sexual activity because you don't want to you don't think about your nine-year-old engaging in sexual activity um, and so there's a little bit of that disconnect but the point being that we have to catch them before they engage in any sexual activity so we can give them that full um, benefit of the vaccine so um, yes and it's yeah. always better to be proactive instead of reactive to any Absolutely. situation. And it can Absolutely. definitely be applied to the HPV vaccine as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And we say the same thing, you know, in regards to sex and sex education that young people, um, all people, you know, probably 99% of all people will engage in sexual activity at some point in their lives. And we want um, young people to have the tools and the knowledge and the information to um, engage in that safely and in a healthy way when they're ready. Um, and that might not be until their wedding night and it might be before then. Um, and either of those are okay, but we just want them to have all the tools that they need to um, be safe and healthy. And it's the same thing with the HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, are there other questions, uh, comments, that we can answer while we have you. I know we're, um, we're definitely early in our time. So uh, this may be a shorter webinar, but we're here, we're happy to answer any questions while we still have the time. Just give it a minute in terms of the chat. Um, so this is our first webinar um, of the year. We're gonna have one every month the rest of the year. It's always on the second Tuesday uh, at noon. It's always free. Um, and if you have ideas on topics that you wanna learn more about, um, I try to always bring in a guest speaker uh, because a lot of you have probably been to our trainings and, and have heard my voice plenty. Um, I like to bring in experts in their fields to come in and talk about those things that they're experts in. Um, so to that point, thank you so much, Taylor, for coming and joining us today. The Laura Crandall Brown Foundation um, is definitely needed in Alabama. I know we have a low HPV vaccination rates um, and high cervical cancer rates across the state. Um, I will send a, a copy of this webinar to everyone after we finish today. Um, hopefully, Taylor, will you be able to share your PowerPoint with us? Yeah, I'd love to. Slide, your slide deck? Okay, great. So we'll be sharing the slide deck as well. You can share this with your colleagues or watch, go back and watch again if you need to. Um, and we will uh, send out more emails about our topic for February uh, here in a couple weeks. Oh, just a second. Um, there is one other question. I've read about parental hesitancy for the HPV vaccine because of the thought their, their children will begin to engage in sexual behavior after the vaccine. Does the Laura Crandall Brown Foundation address this issue with parents through education? Do you all do any of that work? Um, within it, our main objective is to talk about cervical cancer within HPV. Um, that is not really our specialty within parents, you know, explaining that to parents um, within it. But, you know, if we, if we ever go to an event with children, we will always tell parents these facts and things like that. Great. Thank you for answering that. Um, if you have other uh, 
questions for Taylor after the fact, can, um, can you give me your email, Taylor, and I'll just type it here in the chat. Yes, it's T mm -hmm. dot gallops. Okay. At think of Laura. Okay. Dot org. Great. So I'm putting that in the chat to everyone. You can um, email Taylor and ask him any follow up questions. And with that, I think we will wrap up for today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.